Just for those on marketing for yoga teachers. Now, uh, I was recently teaching a bunch of yoga teachers and a body yoga principles. And at the last day, I did about an hour on marketing and they absolutely loved it. They fucking loved it. And the reason I did a thing for body workers a few months ago, same thing, marketing. And then they absolutely loved it. And people keep telling me I'm really good at marketing. And when we say, you're a genius at marketing, I'm like, shut up. I think I'm average at it. I don't, I'm not a marketing professional. I haven't read even that many books on it. Uh, you know, I don't know all the buzzwords, but I have successfully run a business doing something quite alternative for the last nine years and made, you know, a decent enough living from that. So I have some integrity, I think, to talk about this. Um, I said, I'm not sure, also, I'm not specifically a yoga teacher. I train yoga teachers. I work with embodiment. I work in that general area, bringing alternative things into the mainstream. Um, yeah, what I was told, though, by these yoga teachers, they said, wow, you made that really palatable. Sometimes I talk about Jedi versus Sith marketing. So the Sith are like the bad guys from Star Wars, the Jedi are the good guys. If you don't watch Star Wars, where the fuck have you been? But anyway, so that's the terminology that I use. Uh, a lot of it is about re-formulating re, um, things. I think marketing, a lot of the marketing content's out there, a lot of stuff that I've tried to look at, it's just disgusting. Like the language, the values, it's just like blah. You know, it doesn't fit the kind of alternative world. Um, there are a few exceptions to that, like Tad Hargraves, look at marketing for hippies. Um, he's brilliant. A lot of what I'm going to say really comes from him. I uh, have other influences, Julia Chantre, for example, in Brighton, other people have my own embodied perspective on this, of course. Um, so, marketing, huge topic. I, first, first thing, first thing is the frame. I said, let's frame it like this. If I have a sandwich, right, if I have a sandwich, and, I don't know, I was just hitting the camera, I don't know why, I'm bright again. If I have a sandwich and you're hungry, um, uh, marketing is how I let you know I have a sandwich. And how you eat. So I can go, okay, here's a sandwich, hungry person, can I have some money for that? Yeah. So that I can go get more sandwiches and live my life to get me sandwiches. Yeah. So, very simple thing. It's not really a big deal. Um, marketing, in its truest sense, in the non Sith sense of um, helping people fulfill their needs, genuine needs, not like fake needs, producing needs, uh, lying about not actually fixing people's needs. I mean, you know, we just, this is, the integrity line is important, that it's an actual need and we can actually solve that need. Yeah, so um, marketing. And that, that is key, that is key, right at the key of that, in this general frame is the first thing. Second thing there that leads nicely into is knowing your offer. So what is your offer? So if someone comes to your yoga class, what, what do they come for? What do they get? Yeah, the whole what's in it for me. People don't, it's, there's a way in which you're all slightly autistic and don't necessarily, um, I guess a bit unfair on autistic people, I shouldn't say that, but there's a way in which we don't always empathise fully with clients and say, okay, what are they actually coming for? And you can ask people, right, if you have a yoga class, like, what do you get out of it? Now, of course, the easy answer is, well, everyone gets something different. It's, it's like, yeah, but you're not all things to all people and trying to be is terrible marketing, terrible, terrible marketing. There will be a trend there. Um, and we need to know what we're doing in terms of trying to, what aim we're trying to meet with the yoga class, because yoga actually has many different aims, right? It could be relaxation, it could be fitness, it could be something esoteric spiritual thing, you know, in embodiment yoga, for example, is psychological awareness and transference of life. There's very specific aims, and we can better or worse meet those aims according to the method we use um, based on the aim, right? So uh, clarity for ourselves is useful, but in terms of the marketing, we can then articulate that offer in a way which is sexy and appealing, and um, it's like, yeah, I want that. You know, what's the thing your yoga class does? Because um, not all yoga classes are the same, knowing that key offer in language that your clients use. So this is stuff around language, you know, where we're selling in uh, yeah, different groups of people speak in different ways, and they might not all speak yoga speech, and they might not speak how you speak just because they're your clients. They might be just like you and your mates, but they might not. And they certainly aren't all yoga teachers, right? It's pretty rare if you had a class full of yoga teachers. So it's a way in which yoga teachers can get um, removed from their clients and sort of start speaking their own jargon, their own language. So it's worth kind of checking that stuff out. Um, that, that the language of the offer is also aligned. Of course, we're talking already about the target demographic, just a posh term for what kinds of people come to your yoga classes. Um, you can actually map that, you can develop a persona, you know, as a particular kind of person. On some of my courses, I was like, oh, we need more Sally's, we need more Aides or Vididasas, you know, it's like, okay, well, people like that, and they're this age, and they read these things, and they hang out in these places, which brings us to channels. So once you know who you're trying to target, and you've got a clear message, how do you get to them? Who are the influencers? Where do they hang out? What magazines do they read? What Facebook groups or whatever? Instagram are they on? Yeah, so and what social media do they use? So knowing the target group, having a clear message, knowing the channels, the influencers within those channels. And there you go, that's marketing.
of course, having just a really awesome thing that you do, yes, you know, word of mouth is helpful, uh, but you can encourage that, right? That can be part of your marketing is by saying to clients, if you enjoyed the class, please tell a friend, here's a card you can give them. You can encourage the word of mouth. You can, um, you know, for example, we have this course called the AFC and Body Facilitate course, where the people are like three quarters of the way through it, they're really loving it, and we say, look, we're now starting to sell next year's program. If you want to tell your friends, that'd be great. We'll send you an email, make it easy for them, just forward that email on, think of one person now that might like it really straightforward they don't mind doing it no hard pressure from us no hard sell just like if you want yeah but we make it easy so blimey what have we done there done a lot so there's the inner game as well the clearing your sort of own psychology up around money we've got lots of videos on that on the channel like money mindset kind of stuff uh, money mindfulness unfucking yourself around money uh, really really important stuff around money power um in terms of embodiment, this idea of our own ways of being, um, being seen is a big one for marketing. Like some people are like, you big, they can be seen. I'm feeling like small. So working on that, putting yourself out there, being generous, receiving, giving, connecting, even if you're not a natural extrovert. Um, you know, people buy from people, your own personal brand we can look at. There's videos on that. Um, yeah, you know, being authentic, of course, within that. Um, your sales funnel, which I like to think of as a relationship funnel. I think maybe we got that from Tad. Um, you know, how people know about your yoga classes. There's lots I can say. So they, it's already getting a bit long though, this video. So they are my random thoughts and um, things on marketing yoga. I know a lot of my yoga teacher students have taken on board some of these and found them useful. Um, yeah, and you know, it's really nice to see the different sort of brands developing. Some of my students, like you know, my friend Janie, she has slow yoga, and it's a particular kind of person that comes to her. Um, Mr. Patel in London has his own vibe, you know, his own sort of dancey influence thing that he does. Um, yeah, yeah, without you know, this doesn't need to be like commercial, uh, bullshit kind of um, you know, skinny Instagram girls just to have marketing. I'd actually say it's an ethical imperative to do marketing. If you're good at yoga, if you're doing something genuine that helps people, if you're not in that space, if you're not being seen and doing the marketing, then um, people with less skill and less heart will do. And that's a shame, right? And rather than blaming those people, I think um, we can take responsibility and say, you know what, uh, I can actually put myself out there better, I can articulate my offer, get it out to people. That's part of what I do. That's not just like something dirty, you know, I don't touch money, this sort of weird Christian idea that's still in our system a little bit with yoga people. Um, you know, like, oh, money's evil, so I don't do that, I just teach yoga. No, that's part of what you do, right? So, um, yeah, I hope this has been helpful. Look at the other videos. If you Google Purpose Black Belt, the course is running now, so I'm not selling it, to be clear. It's, it's well underway, so you can't join it now. But there's lots and lots of free videos from that course, and loads of those apply to yoga teachers. So, um, yeah, I hope that helps. Take care.